like i wanted to be the guy and then you know i'm 16 you know i'm being featured on the news they're validating things that i think about myself yeah i get back on the news they're validating things that i think about myself i graduate high school i find myself on a six-figure business before 20 years old before 20 and i'm like i can't mess this up yeah like, too much is riding on this yeah, yeah, yeah this is me this is my pride so right? what happened i failed Before we get into the episode, I just wanted to let you all in on our next upcoming event, August 9th and 10th. The event is called Quantum Leap, guided by the teachings, principles, and disciplines from the founder of Keller Williams, Gary Keller. This event is not a get rich quick class or your standard real estate training. It is an understanding of the principles on how to live a big life, live a life of abundance, gain massive clarity, and how to fund your life's mission. This event is for real estate professionals with any level of experience, entrepreneurs, business professionals, or anyone looking to take their life to the next level. Tickets are available now for virtual or in person, August 9th and 10th. We can't wait to see you there. Welcome to the Think Pod, where thoughts have no limits. My name is Jared Dykus. Today I have with us the certified listing boy, wow. Zavon Johnson. What a title. You deserve Ooh. it, man. Are you saying that because I'm light skin or, or, or what? <laughs> Do I favor Drake a little bit? Or, I, I, don't I don't know, know man. Maybe we'll, a combination. We'll get into it for sure, man. We'll get into it. I but like it. thank you for coming on. Really thank appreciate it. I appreciate it. Zavon, um, I think, and, and me and you have a little bit of a relationship, yeah. and we've talked in the past, so... Um, what I'm going to ask today is really stuff that I, I'm genuinely curious about. Sure. What was your introduction to the business world? Oh, wow. So not just real estate. But no, the just the world. business world. Like Wow. Oh, my gosh. You're taking me way back, Jared. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when I was a kid, and when I say kid, I mean like five years old, seven years old, like really young. Mm -hmm. I used to look at infomercials. And infomercials. I would look at like the pitch man. Like, no. You know, like, like Billy um, Mays and stuff? That's exactly what I was about to say. Like Billy Mays, people like that. When I was a kid, I didn't know any better. I thought they owned the company. <laughs> like I was like, man, like I want to be a guy like one of them, like one of those guys that's able to like sell stuff and like, yeah. man, they that guy must own the whole show. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah. I was a young kid, I was like, mom, one day I want to grow up and I want to sell stuff to people, and I want to do that. I want to be that guy. So that was like, if we're if we're really being yeah, honest, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was my first introduction to. I guess the the idea of being a businessman, the idea of being a salesperson, an entrepreneur. My formal introduction started the day I turned eighteen. I, I launched my mm. first company, my first LLC. So that's where that's where it manifested. And and what was that business? So my first company, I was a social media consultant. But even through high school, I was doing social media work. Like what? Yeah. So I actually I own one of the first significantly large basketball pages mm. on Instagram and all through high school I was charging companies basically to run advertisements and how old were you you're like 16 17 yes <laughs> I was like 16 17 what was this like 2012 13 14 still 7, 13. yeah Instagram like yeah. you know was very early on it was early on and it was it was so early on where it was like companies had to choose between me and like three or four other pages so yeah I was in high school that was that was I guess you could say that was my formal introduction yeah. to business, technically. You know what I mean? What do you think that process taught you? Like, what was the biggest lesson learned through through that process? Man, biggest lesson learned through that. I think it taught me, Jared. I think it taught me anything's possible, man. Like, really? You know, when I was when I was in high school and I started being able to pay my own bills with this idea that I had had. I kind of early on started to figure out like, man, like I can, I can do anything I want to do. Mm. Like why, why should I settle for anything less than what I want to do? But how did you even know that there was anything less out there for you? Like, what, what do you mean by that? Like, were was what you're doing different than what your teachers were telling you to do is that what you mean by that or yeah no nah, jared that's a great question i feel like i've always been i've always been like stressed over like 
what do I want to do? Mm. Like when I got into high school, I, f- I feel like I was more focused on like, okay, what am I going to do when this is when this is over? Okay. Like I, from like the jump, like I was always concerned about that. Like what? All right, it's go time. Am I going to go to college? Am I going to, if I do go to college, what am I going go to go to college for? Yeah. I always like, when I, as soon as I hit high school, I was like, man, I got to figure this out. Like, I got to figure this out ASAP. But why? Why not just take a four-year vacation? <sighs> Jared, I don't know. I don't know. I just felt like time was moving. I had a mentor that okay. I met. So I met my mentor. I was 13. As soon as I was coming into high school, actually. Really? I met my mentor. Shout out to Jose. Um, son of the richest man in Cape Verdea, hmm. which I know is kind of... A lot of people don't even know what Cape It's Verde an odd flex. Is. Richest man in Cape Flaherty, or yeah. whatever you say. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so I met him. Wow. So he's mentoring me, right? And on suddenly what, on on business, on life, wow. on entrepreneurship. So I come into high school and I I meet him at the same time and I'm like, Oh, this is perfect. I'm already stressed out about what am I gonna do in my life. Mm-hmm. Now I got this person that can guide me in the right direction. So it was just like when I had that I was like, oh my gosh, it's, yeah. it's go time. Like now's the time to change my life. Now's the time to pick what I want to do with my life right now. And you decided basketball Instagram for in that moment. In that moment, yes. I just needed to get started. Yep. Like Jared, I was doing like multi-level marketing. Mm-hmm. I was doing like- <laughs> We're all guilty of it. <laughs> like, like Jared, I just wanted to get started, baby. Like I just wanted something to do immediately that was practical in the real world right that i could do right that was practical in the real world i i just felt like time was working against me for whatever reason Hmm. so i just needed to i just wanted to get started and so i'm saying yeah yeah i I get that you have like pressure from like family or anyone or somebody around you that was like pushing you to maybe feel that way man it's 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 really funny you say that like i think the biggest gift that I had throughout my entire life is I had no pressure, none. Like the day I dropped out of college, my family was slightly upset with me, but it was like, I understand. You've got a path that you're on. And I'll be honest, I feel, I feel like the, the lack of pressure that I had is what really made me feel comfortable to try what Zayvon wants to do, not what society says that I'm supposed to do, not what someone who failed in life says I'm supposed to do, but I got to really have an honest shot at my dreams and my aspirations. And that's deep. I, I know this podcast mm-hmm. just now started, but <laughs> that's just like, that means a lot to me. Yeah, I mean, a, I just feel like a lot of times people have like pressure from other yeah. people, but it's it's interesting to say that to hear that you say that you didn't, there was no pressure and that's kind of what pushed you which i feel like a lot of times people john likes and jared like to say it's like uh people are floating through life like a jellyfish like yeah. they don't have pressure necessarily or maybe yeah. they do or maybe they don't but even if they do don't yeah. have any pressure and it's just kind of like oh, i'm just gonna go with the flow you sounded like you had a little bit more ambition where, where do you think that came from man it came from my family man mm-hmm. like so, you know, my, my grandfather, you know, God rest his soul, he was the hardest working man I know. Woke up, he would work for months straight, waking up at like four o'clock in the morning. Dude. He was a chef. Wow. So, you know, he had to get there early, prepare the food, for, mm-hmm. like on the dot, four o'clock mm-hmm. in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. And I feel like, you know, you're talking about pressure. I didn't have anyone in my ear like saying to me, Zay, you better go to college, you better do this, you better do this, you better do that. But knowing that, okay, I'm gonna take a different route in life, but I owe it to all these people. If I'm gonna go do something completely against the norm, I owe it to all my family, all my friends to actually see that through, if I'm gonna take that risk. Cause it's me, I'm the one that's taking the risk. You know, I'm the one that is going against the grain. You know, my family, they did everything they could to make me a success, help me get into college, I've got to actually make sure I follow through on my plan. I don't know. Mm. That, does that make sense? Yeah, you see it does. Yeah. You know? It's like I'm holding myself accountable because I know I'm the one that's choosing to take this risk. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. it almost seems like because your family didn't put pressure on you, you decided to put that pressure on yourself. Yeah. It's, it almost feels like since they didn't put any pressure on me, that was the pressure. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, okay, they're giving me this privilege of being able to do whatever I want. I better not mess this up. Yeah. Y- you know what I mean? So, yeah, Jared. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get that yeah, deep. Yeah, no, we got first. deep, like, immediately, but I love it, though. Yeah. I'm, glad you, I'm glad you went there, though. I mean, that's, yeah. like... Yeah. Just so, you know, it's 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 actually really cool to hear that uh, yeah. you had a family that was like that because you hear the opposite a lot of times where it's like people are forced into a role yeah. or they that their parents want them to be in, yeah. and then they go the opposite, right? They they wanted yeah. to be a lawyer, but they became a real estate agent. You know what I mean? Exactly, like, exactly. Then they build up this disdain inside of themselves. Mm-hmm. They're feeling like they're doing something they don't want to do. You know, I feel like that's tragic. Yeah. I feel like that's tragic, Jared. We want to do what we want to do. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just letting you sit in your thought, man. I'm just letting you this sit. This is fun. This is fun. No, I um, I think that, like, I wouldn't advise anyone to be as lenient with their kids in terms of their life progression as – my family was unless they're also going to hold themselves accountable at a very high degree. Mm. I feel like a lot of people need to be held accountable. Yeah. They don't have that discipline as to where it's like, okay, well, if I fail, I fail. If, you know, my mom will take care of me. My father will take care of me. So-and-so will take care of me. Like, I don't know. I've just always stressed about, I got to make this happen. Because they, were they giving you a safety net though? They like, did you know that if you net, did fail, like, you could at least move back home with them and, you know, get an internship somewhere, go back to school, whatever you want to know the reality, Jared? That's what, I'm, that's what I'm looking for, man. Dude, the reality is, like, so, and I'm just pouring it all out there. Like, when I was a kid, when I was 14, 15, I was on the front page of the newspaper. Why are you holding out on me, bro? Like, what are you talking about? You're on the front news of the news. What were you, ta- what were you doing? for my business. So when I was 14, 15, I was on the front page of the newspaper, uh, a Stanton teen, I'm from a city called Stanton, Virginia, Stanton mm-hmm. teen built successful online business. Wow. Then a couple years later, I was on the, I was on the news, on TV, everyone. So I, I, in my mind, like I would go out in public in, my, in the town that I'm from, everyone would recognize me. Right. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I can't fail. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, can I ask you something though? Do you feel like that, um, mental image, like when, when that was happening to you, you were probably what, 16 years old. I was, yeah. And you're my age now, right? So 24. Yeah. That was 25 next month. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. I turned 25 in a couple of days. Really? I'm not going to give out my birthday though. Ooh. You got to be out of your mind. You think I'm telling my birthday on this podcast? But mm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Mm. But seven listeners. Yeah, the seven, <laughs> the seven people stalking me. Shout out um, to the seven listeners. Yeah, yeah, you, guys. Those. you guys are how we pay the, the lights in this building. Yep, we keep so. the lights mm. on. It's all because of that. Um, do you feel like if you, like, did you have a different? And I'm not trying because you're a fucking boss, and I hope you understand. Dude, thank that. you for saying that. But. At 16 years old, did you think at 24 years old, you would be at a different place than you are now? And is that mental yeah. image that you held at such a young age, does <clears throat> that create a lot of ambition for you to move faster? And Yeah. Yeah. So do you think that's healthy, though? No. I don't know. Like, No, I it's not. I, no, I can tell you it's not healthy. To have that mental image at such a young age. Yeah. Like, did you want to be a millionaire by, like, 21 or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, like, Jared, I, like... There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I was in yeah. the same boat. That's why so I'm asking. Yeah. So, you know, Jared, like, it's always been like a rush for me. Like, it's always been like, I don't know what happened before high school that created this, like, rush in me. But it's like, I, I need it now. And like, you wanted to grow up quick, probably, like, right? ASAP. But not 
not through the typical means of getting a job. No, I understand. You know what I'm saying? But like, like you I, wanted to be on your own. You want to be moving and grooving to your own sale. Not even that. I wanted to be on top of the world. Wow. I wanted to be Genghis Khan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, like, I, like, I wanted to be the guy. And then, you know, I'm 16. You know, I'm being featured on the news. They're validating things that I think about myself. Yeah. I get back on the news. They're validating things that I think about myself. I graduate high school. I find myself in a six-figure business. Before 20 years old. Before 20. And I'm like, I can't mess this up. Yeah. Like, too much is riding on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is me. This is my pride. So right? what happened? I failed. It wasn't as successful as I thought it was going to be. And at what point did you know that you failed? To your standards. Yeah. So I want to I want to make this clear. I didn't fail. When I say I failed, I failed by my standards. Mm -hmm. I think that it's uh, I don't want to come on here and sound like I'm this you know, out of touch guy. Mm -hmm. In reality, I was doing okay. Yeah. But I think that I had these certain expectations. Okay, I'm at six figures now. Yeah. Okay, I want a million. Yeah. Okay, why am I not there? Everyone believes in me. Everyone thinks yeah. I'm amazing. I go out, I go shopping, everyone recognizes me, mm -hmm. right? All my high school classmates, and I'm not trying to sound like I just think I'm the best, you know, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm not no. trying. Yeah. I'm just like, I had this expectation, and it's just like, I was just like, Jared, like, if I don't keep up, the momentum what really am i yeah it just has been right and i still feel that way so it's real i want to park how you still feel that way real quick how did you get duped into real estate then so like that was at like around it sounds 18 to 20 ish is yeah. you failing forward the social media business yeah and when i say failing forward i mean making hundreds of thousands of dollars which doesn't <laughs> seem like failing but my best client what happened? My best client was a top producer in real estate. And I was running advertisements for him. Like leads? Right. Oh, wow. So I was doing Facebook. This was 2017. Mm. I was running Facebook leads for him, Facebook ads. I basically managed his entire... Database. Advertising spin. Oh, Data wow. Well, yeah, 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 sure. But it was database. Man. Okay. But ma mainly it was his advertising spin. Okay. And we were working on getting leads for him. And back at that time, what I used to do was I would charge businesses a couple thousand dollars a month uh, to pay me. And then they would fund their own advertisements. Mm -hmm. And whatever would happen in terms of their conversion ratio was on them, right? Yeah. But I was, at the end of the day, making a couple thousand dollars. Well, I see him. I'm getting paid a couple thousand dollars a month. And look, this is just being real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just being real. I'm making a couple thousand dollars a month. And one of my leads converts, and he makes $30,000 off of that sale that month. That's reality? That, like, that happened? A lot. Oh, wow. And then another month goes by. Tens of thousands of dollars. Two months go by, tens of thousands. You're of seeing the revenue? I am seeing this. Oh, wow. Like, play out. And I'm just like, okay. I'm really good at social media. Why don't I just do this for myself? I was like, I'm on the, I'm on the wrong end of this, of this play here. Like, wow. I'm out here generating revenue for these businesses. I used to work for like chains of gas stations. Like I would manage their social media for them. I would drive customers to their gas station. I would work for like real estate agents. Wow. Making like that yeah. on in comparison to how much publicity I was gaining them. Yeah. And I was just kind of like one day I was like, man, I'm basically working like six jobs right now. For everyone but myself. Right. But like for every business, I'm representing, I'm, I'm basically working a full-time job being their social media mm -hmm. manager. 
And just one of those businesses is reaping the benefits that exceeds my entire income wow. for my whole ensemble. Wow. So what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> so what am I doing? That's crazy. Right? So I was just like, man, I'm going to take all my knowledge and I'm going to package this up. I'm going to not let anyone renew. I'm going to take a huge bet on myself. And I'm going to go somewhere where the margins are better. And where Actually, was that's that? That's what I did. I, where are the I, margins I, I better? Worked, I worked in real estate. Mm. I got my real estate license. And how old were you when you got your real estate license? Gosh, like 22, 21. 22, 21. Yeah. So you made a decision before going into real estate, I am done with social media? Or were you going to still do that on the side while getting <laughs> into real estate? You know what's funny? Oh, oh, you mean like doing social media as a profession, yes, not for myself? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, Jared, like when I make my mind, so the viewers might not know this, but you know. Mm-hmm. Like when I make my mind up on something, like, you're all it's in. like blazing, like yeah. like cut ties, right? So yeah, so the moment that I decide I'm gonna get in the real, it was it was over with, it was done. Mm. Like social media was 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 no more. So you just got into real estate yeah. because you realized that you were lead generating, yeah, you know, way more revenue than you're being received. Yeah. You get into real I'm estate. I'm doing. I'm doing. I, I looked at. I looked at real estate agents as lead generators, basically. Uh-huh. And I'd argue that to a certain degree, we still are real, real, yeah. real estate. Agents really are lead generators. And I was like, okay, I can do the job of lead generating so good that people who are supposed to have that as their occupation are paying me. Mm. So then, why don't I just do it for myself? <laughs> so then, how did you get your first pieces of business as a real estate agent at twenty year old? 20 years old then or 21 you want to know some you want to know what's so funny what do you want to know how i built up my social media business like how i gain clients to your social media business yes don't tell me it was cold calling i was cold calling you were cold calling and like door knock like i would just walk into a business like b2b door knock yeah like you're just rolling up into a sunoco like yo, yeah. you guys need more foot traffic like yeah like I was co- like I was never it's so funny. I was never doing hardly any social media promotion for myself. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> It's like you're prospecting for social media. Yes. That's yes. really backwards, but it makes sense. You know what I mean? Because I was I was like, dude, I want success right now. Yeah. Like, I don't have time for these Facebook like You needed to real, go direct. Yeah, I needed like I think the thing and this goes back to me being like impatient and mm-hmm. like needing stuff now like i didn't have time i knew facebook leads took 90 to 120 days to cook mm. i don't have that time yeah like i need it now yeah so i was like okay i i want some clients right now i'm gonna go walk into this business well, who's the owner <laughs> i'm zavon johnson you need my services yeah you know i would call up real estate agents i would just walk into like factories like huge factories, like $10 like million dollar plus. Stuff? Yeah, like just any, like any business I thought had some rev, like substantial revenue, I would yeah. just walk in. I didn't care. What's like the worst you got told off face oh, no, to everybody face? Everybody loved me actually. Really? Yeah, business to business, me. dude? Yeah. Where'd you learn most of that stuff? Like uh, all of the different Facebook world, things like that. So Facebook knowledge for me came primarily from Joshua Smith. Um, Joshua Smith is huge on Facebook, specifically for real estate, or really, I guess you could say internet lead generation specifically for real estate. Okay. Now, outside of that world, Gary Vaynerchuk. I read all of his books. Yeah, who's Gary V? Yeah, who who is, who is that guy? Yeah. But yeah, Gary Vaynerchuk, I read all of his books, and primarily, uh, pri- primarily just experimentation. Like around the time that I started my social media agency, mm-hmm. it really, social media was just kind of developing. Um, like th- the concept of social media ads and stuff like that, it was just becoming relevant. Yep. So a lot of stuff during that time period, I just had to try. Yeah. You know, like 
I just had to spend money. I just had yeah. to spend money on ads. Let's see what works. And back then, it wasn't even that much money. Like Facebook was basically giving ads away. They ad were space giving away. them things yeah. away. So it's like, okay, let's let's just see what works. Wow. I lost a lot of money doing that, <laughs> but I learned a lot though, and, and you, I passed that knowledge on to my clients. And then, how did you pass that knowledge on to your own real estate business? Like, would you argue that when you first started, you did more prospecting than social media advertising with everything that you learned? I quickly realized I don't even like social media. Good, bro. Wow. And what did you not like about that? The creative, like setting it up, all the minutia? I'm, Jared, there's a video by Grant Cardone and Grant says, if you need it to make $10,000 by the end of this week, who here will post on Facebook about it? And who here would call everyone they know and call everyone they know that will possibly buy their product immediately? And the point is, if you want to close sales right now, You've got to bridge the gap between you and who's got the money. Mm. Like quick, right? Like this isn't about making a Facebook post and hoping that someone's going to call you at some point and, oh, I just hope, well, it was me. You know, maybe this guy that I messaged on LinkedIn will respond within 24. I don't have time for that. Yeah. And I realized as soon as I got into real estate, like I don't like the results that social media brings in a short term time span it works it's amazing and i probably will implement it in my business at scale at some point mm-hmm. in the future of i mean i'm doing will. a lot of youtube stuff now shout out to the zavon johnson show on youtube all right but i just don't feel like that should be the foundation of a business do for you me. think it's because it's not as predictable as prospecting like you yeah. could bet on your life yeah that I could probably drop you in any state, give you a FISBO and an expired list, and you're getting at least one listing a month. Yeah. Compared to I drop you in any state with any yeah. tools, and I'm like, create content and bring yeah. a consumer. Yeah. It sounds like witchcraft that's, compared that's, to giving someone a cold call. I like I like, I like, like the, the proven route. I know, I, I like knowing I can do ABC and XYZ is going to come out. Yeah. I don't like figurative okay, let me create this piece of content. Let me hope that someone comes in. Let me, you, you just yeah. don't know. It's, and the reality it's not is, on you. it's not on me, it's to the world. Yeah. Whether the world is gonna find what I post attractive or not, mm-hmm. right? And let's stay, let, let, let's be real here. Who's gonna have the most success on social media? If ever, on a, on a flat plane, who's gonna have the most, just be real, be real. Who compared to who? Out of, if you put 10 people in a room, who do you think is going to have the most success on social? Just, just really, Jared. Hot girls. Really. Thank you. Hot girls. Yeah. I was going to say influence, but I guess they can be the same thing. Look, social media is about appearance. If you're a super attractive person, in my opinion, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to be successful on social media. Mm-hmm. I think I look great. Yeah. I think you do too, Jared. Thank you. But I don't think that we're so stunning yeah. that we can post a five second video about real estate and we can easily expect 20 people to contact us. Consumers. That's just not realistic. Mm-hmm. Right, consumer. Unless we make something that's so funny and so, you know, oh my gosh. But even so, like you're talking about real estate, it'd have to go to a specific geographical area as well. So there's like that whole aspect of it. I would also even put the aspect of like doing that over time on a long period of time. You build up to your brand big enough to be like a Ryan Sirhan. Absolutely. Absolutely. But there's a there's a key point that you mentioned there. Time. Mm. Time. And what does Ryan have? That a brand that new I don't agent, have. That a brand new agent who just got their license doesn't have a lot. I don't have a TV show that's being sent out to 15 million people every yeah. night. I don't have that. 
to launch a brand off of, to uh -huh. launch a YouTube channel off of. But with that being said, yes, I could probably work diligently and over the course of the next five, 10 years, build up some type of following. There's people that's done that. Graham Stephan, you know, meet Kevin, Brian Casella, to name a few. Mm -hmm. Like there's lots of people who have done that. Yeah. But that takes time. Yeah. And I don't have that. You, you, you don't you have choose that currently? not to have that. Like to, you, you, you currently have the time. You're just choosing not to implement that time accordingly because something else is outweighing <sighs> what is best for you, right? I mean, is that a way of looking at it or is that how you look at it? So I'm building up my YouTube channel. I'm posting a video a day. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, when I say I don't have the time, I'm saying... Okay, I've got I've got Mike Ferry that I'm paying for a thousand bucks on the fifteenth of this month. Mm -hmm. A like on my YouTube channel is not going to pay for that. Yeah, you know I want I want a G wagon next year. Yo, what color? Gray or black? Yeah, but bro. my point is, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, a Facebook like's not going to give me that G wagon, yeah. Jared. Me calling people for eight hours today is. Me finding a seller today that's going to pay me a commission is going to do that. Wow. I would, I would argue with you that. Okay. <laughs> and that's that, fine. That's fine. That's yeah. Fine. I mean, yeah. I, I just, I think you can look at, look at anybody sure. in the past five years and you, pr and you know this cause you know, a lot of these people, sure. you've seen a lot of these people who have gone from nothing to, to being able to open doors that like in yes, time may take a little bit longer to get there and the effort it takes to get to that point but once you hit that mark or that level the doors are open to where g wagons at your front door tomorrow not in seven Absolutely. prospects later or whatever that case may be right i i think you're so right i think so what you don't know is i have a friend that actually is a youtube star um, I'm not going to say his name, but he makes over $2 million a year. I sold him a house. I know him personally. Mm -hmm. Why not? You don't want to give him free publicity. You got to pay for this uh, ad because, space. <laughs> oh yeah. You do got to pay for this ad space. You got to send, yeah, you got to yeah, support the, the Patreon pop, yeah. or yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the point is between the time that it took him to get to where he's making $2 million a year, mm -hmm. there was a whole lot of nothing coming in. You see what I'm saying? I realize the value of building something up, but I need to get paid along the way. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I, I get it. Yeah. Like I get what you're like. Yeah. And, 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 and you, I think we're both on the same page too. Cause you're, you're, you're obviously doing it right. You're sure. just not, maybe you're not doing it as much as that person because that's not as important to you at the, in this moment as getting paid tomorrow is rather than three years from now. Well, I'm making a video a day. That's what I'm saying. Like you're, but you're not. Are you are you doing a TikTok a day, a Instagram a day, like a, a communicating with your people every single day? Like you know those wow. steps that that's probably what it takes to actually go to that level, right? Maybe I need to readdress my commitment <laughs> levels. Yeah. Because see, I think that I'm working hard making a video a day, but maybe I should work harder. Well, it it goes back to what what makes most sense for you, right? Like, how does that align with your goals? How does that, where do you want to put your time commitment into that, right? Like what what makes sense for you to, does it make sense for you to do that? Or does it make more sense for you to be building up your real estate career so that you can go to a place three years from now and have a lot more knowledge, wisdom, expertise, and something that you're maybe, con your content is elevated to an even higher level. So then you're able to even pour in even deeper than what you could even right now. Yeah, I'm kind of with I'm kind of with Jeff on that. Like I almost yeah. feel like as much as Gary Vee is cool and like he's like, yeah, if I was you know 26 years old documenting myself, it'd be the best content ever. Like I'm not sure if I like believe in that. Like I think that like you're, you're not sure if you believe in that. Yeah, like I, I don't know if like his best content really would have came out of, of him being a 24-year-old kid from New Jersey. I think like his best content is the shit that he's putting out now because right he now. had the experience. 
you know, like what we're talking about, like we're talking about getting a G wagon because we're YouTube influencers. That's like the, like I told you yesterday, that's the number one thing that every kid wants to do is that. Like what, you everyone surveyed the, all the kids? No, yeah, I surveyed all the kids. But, you surveyed the kids. That but everyone everything. wants to be a TikTok influencer. Everybody wants to be a YouTube influencer. It's like, you know, that is the hardest thing to do in the whole entire world, I would argue. Yeah, but the, the barriers to entry are so easily accessible. But what they don't see is the time, the commitment, the time that it takes yeah, yeah, yeah. to get to that point. I mean, I like someone like Mr. Beast who is – literally studied YouTube to mm -hmm. figure out how to get to that point. Yeah. And it's like, no one really, no one looks at it from that approach. They just look at it as like, Oh, so-and-so is eight, 17 years old and he's, you know, a fucking star now. And he's got all these great things, but it's like that kid also probably got lucky. You're not talking about that. You're not mm -hmm. talking about the luck. You're not talking about the fact that he s set his life to get to that point too. Yeah. You know, there's a lot involved. It's a fucking, it's a formula. Yeah. It's a recipe, but a lot of people don't want to, you know, everybody has their own different things and what they choose to put their time into and invest their time into. So I think that's kind of what it gets back to. It's like, what's important to you? Yeah. The way you just said that, that's becoming important to me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's. Well, I mean, Zayvon, wow. I, you've built a very successful business for yourself off of prospecting. Yeah. Like you take listings, you. But see, Jarrett. <laughs> see, so it's deeper than that. And see, now you, see, you got me going. So Go on. It's, it's deeper than that, Jared. Like, it's deeper <laughs> than building a big it's, business it's, for yourself. It's deeper than me making a sale and making this much this year. Uh huh. It's deeper than me. Oh, I listed that house for sale. Oh, I got that lead yeah, yeah, that yeah. week. It's deeper than that. I want to be king of the world, Jared. Like, I want to, like, I want so much out of this life. Like, and I feel like, like, what you're talking about, like, really what you just now told me is, is a commitment. A commitment to really taking the social media more serious. Really taking this more serious so that down the line, it'll be substantially bigger. And that speaks volumes to me. Because it's deeper than me just being a real estate agent. Yeah. Like, I want to be, I don't know, just significantly larger than this. And I know that I'm not going to get that if I'm not. Like, Kanye West in 02. Like, mm -hmm. I, I make that reference all the time. Yeah. Like, he was constantly promoting himself. Yeah. Right? Like, constantly promoting yeah. himself. Constantly making himself into an icon. Yeah. Constantly. Yeah. And what is he? An icon. <laughs> <laughs> an icon yeah. and it's like that's why i'm starting to make a youtube video a day because it's like dude it, this is deeper than me just making some calls this is deeper than me just getting that listing that time selling that house that time getting that commission check i need to be known yeah right i need to have a following i need to have a platform to launch whatever i want from mm -hmm. but like do you really need a, a platform or do you need to just document yourself for long enough of time for it to inevitably like, I mean, I would argue that you could put out in a video for the next year, every single day, 365 days a year of you getting a listing every day. You did 365 listings next year and no one could view those YouTube videos for like three years. Four or five years from now, you launch whatever and you reference that, that is your vibe. That's your content. So like the videos that you're putting out every day, like even the think pod, like th we know like this isn't the pinnacle of our content yet. Like this is just documentation. This is just building of, uh, of, a. a a catalog so that when someone three years from now goes to think and it's something completely different than what it is now, they could get so caught up in the rabbit hole that they're now watching this exact interview, which was like one of our first interviews to the think pod when there's like 10 different like series and this, that you see what I'm saying? Like just like the documentation that you could be a video about what you ate for breakfast, but because who you are, 
like five years from now is so different than who you are today, maybe that video means something. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, it does. I I listened to. Did you guys listen to Joe Rogan, Ryan Holiday yeah. episode? You listen to mm-hmm. the whole thing. Uh, seventy five percent. Yeah. So like, so I think it's sort of towards the end. Um, but he he starts to talk about like are they they're talking about the concept of like doing doing things for the sake of you doing things like mm. and doing them the best you can like just to try your best and doing them for you not for anyone else and I, I, that's like stuck with me because i like it like clicked i think more in this conversation it's just like wow you just have to do it for yourself you just know all of me. all of it is right? what if you don't right like what if you built a brand like i hate um, I'm going to pretend I don't hate fishing, but let's, let's pretend I hated I fishing. fishing. I love fishing. Actually. I love fishing. Dude. Fishing, fishing, fishing rules. Yeah. Fishing's cool. Yeah. Imagine if I built a personal brand behind me fishing yeah. two, three million followers. Do you think I give a fuck about that? Dude, I'm pissed. I have to make fishing content every day if I hate <laughs> it. Like imagine you actually become exactly who you want it to be, but you were chasing something that you didn't want it to actually become. And now you're forced to build content around this, this alter ego of whatever, like yeah. five, 10 years from now, I have a weird feeling that, I mean, who knows, maybe you're a prospecting legend and 10 years from now, you're still on Mojo ripping it. But I have a weird feeling that 10 years from now, whatever content you're going to be putting out, is probably going to be not necessarily about real estate prospecting. And I think that's the best way to describe it. Mm. I think that's the best way to describe it. I want people to fall in love with Savon, right? Like I want to be able to create content that compels people beyond making this sale, beyond real estate to the point where they want to tag along on the journey. Mm. Like I like Gary Vaynerchuk more than just Oh, that's the dude that does social media. Yeah. Like, I subscribe to the business of Gary Vaynerchuk. I subscribe to the lifestyle of Gary Vaynerchuk. I subscribe. I want to follow along on his journey. Did you like the Daily Vs and whatnot? Did you ever used to watch them? His like, oh, the daily little vlogs? short, the little short ones, like no, the, like the vlogs. Oh, the daily ones that he used yeah, to do. Yeah, dude. I actually, so I didn't watch them consistently. I feel like that's where I would actually <laughs> learn the most. Like, not from the practical, like, here's 10 ways for you to grow your TikTok or Instagram. Like, just from, like, seeing him operate and, like, a documentation of his day-to-day life, I learned the most about who he is. Yeah. And, like, why he may do certain things, if that makes sense. Yeah. Looking at what he does on a daily basis. Yeah, and Looking as an operator schedule. of a business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Looking not not schedule. so much this is for yeah. my audience, but yeah. this is my life. Like, you yeah. know, take it for what it is. Yeah, looking at his schedule, looking at what he does on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. yeah. It gets you more ingrained with like what, do like is this a mentor that I want to follow for yeah. life in terms of like how they live their life? Mm. Like, mm uh john's talked about it in the past too but like even gary keller was saying like you're you can have a mentor who is in exceptional in finance in yeah. business but he may be the worst mentor for family Got it. and you know looking at someone like like looking at that as like Got oh it. like an idol of someone like that or an, a mentor yeah. online or whatever the case may be it's like yeah you, you kind of you get the ability to pick and choose yeah because you get like okay we get one percent of their life on a short two minute video we yeah. get maybe two percent of their life on a 10 minute video that's like mm. a vlog style so you just sort of can see like oh this is how that world can progress a little bit you know wow yeah i i would relate the daily v's to like michael jordan film oh, like the, that documentary not so much the documentary i'm talking about like game footage game footage yeah dude gary's going like from meeting to meeting like he's like talking shit about like you can't be having 15 minute meetings they need to be five like 
just that philosophy alone. Like he's, you know, what I mean? like yeah. little stuff. Like I was just picking up and like looking him. at those like fine details. Yeah, I was just like, oh, that, that you wouldn't have might, you might not have learned that and from that just he's, the how to. And video. he's not saying it. He's not saying like You're even seeing it. like yeah, I'm yeah, seeing yeah. a rel- like the way he responded to something that someone said and like. I'm just using his um, him as an example because I believe in 2015, 16, there really wasn't like another entrepreneur who was documenting the journey from like an operation standpoint as much as he was. No. So like I couldn't. Le- I would argue there really wasn't many people back in that time documenting much on a very yeah. consistent basis, sort of like Casey besides, Neistat. Exactly. Besides like the vloggers. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, the, the vloggers of the YouTube world, right? Well, like sure. They had they yeah. had that, but but from an entrepreneurial right, business right, right, right. perspective. Far Definitely the ones who did the ones who did are the are the upper echelon of the peak success yeah. today. Mm. So it makes you wonder, like, okay, five ten years from now, who are those people, right? Yeah. If we're sitting here today doing this, and if I want to eventually be at that point, what do I need to do to beat it at that point? Am I doing the right things to get me to that point? Wow. Yeah, they did that so that maybe so maybe I should do that. If right. th- if that's what's important to you, if yeah. that is what is important to your goals, wow. your time, where you want to be, I think well, that's really what it comes the wheel. back to. Like it's already a proven track to success. If yes, if that is something you want to be, and if that is the the track you want to be on, bro. Yeah, like I mean, you don't understand that. I'm, I mean, I mean, not that you don't understand that. I'm just no, saying, no, no, Jared. I don't understand. But that. Like, bro, if no, you I don't. if you took out a fifty thousand dollar loan and paid someone for the next two years to just document every single thing that you do for the next two years, if you actually believe that you're gonna become the person that you're gonna become, that is in your financial interest to get that whole two years documented and then create like micro content and how tos on how you became that person only from documentation of footage. You and see what I'm saying? It probably pay for itself in yeah, the first year. And that's year what after Gary too. did is he just brought videographers for free. So I mean if you can find a way not to take out a loan, that's even better. Just to document what he was doing because he was such that person. You, you see know who it? did that? Who? I don't want to sound like I'm the biggest fan of her, but Kanye West did that. I'm yeah. just saying. What do you mean? Kanye West actually had someone document. Oh, the, for the uh genius documentary yeah. and whatnot? Yeah. Yeah. I got a lot out of that. Yeah, that was a freaking sick. I actually sick. see what you're saying, though. What you're saying actually makes sense. Yeah. And I didn't know that. Yeah, it's not complicated. Yeah. Like, mm, would you watch a video of Michael Jordan in high school lose Absolutely. a basketball game? I would love that footage. Absolutely. Like, it doesn't matter that he lost the basketball game or he sat on the bench. Like, dude, he's Michael Jordan. I'm watching yeah. anything by Michael that. Jordan. You know? For sure. Um. I want to hop into scenarios. I'm sorry oh, okay. to switch up the flow. It's, it's okay. What's we up? can have our, our therapy session Dude, later. Dude, we could yeah. we could probably <laughs> make this like a like. I told you, Zayvon's gonna be a great guy. I know you might have to Thank be you. like our reoccurring like we call this something. Oh, episode. Maybe let's call it the Zayvon Johnson show. <laughs> maybe this becomes the Zayvon maybe Johnson this. show. <laughs> Welcome to the Zayvon Johnson show. Or or we call it like Zayvon Jared and Jeff s- sell the world mm. of podcasting. Yes. <laughs> okay, what's your next topic? Scenarios. What's your next scenario? So wait, I just want to provide some context to the viewers because you didn't say it. You are a savage. You, every single day on Instagram, post a minimum of four to five hours of cold calling, time logged that you've done that day. And you're posting that by like seven o'clock. Yeah. Sometimes it's like late as fuck. Like, a lot I'm of people like, don't get it though. So that's just time on the dialer. No, I know. But yeah. yo, the time on the dialer is nothing to be yeah. uh, tossed around with. I mean, that is that is seriously like a hard, I know not for you, I know not for some other people, but to the average person who hops into this industry, sitting in one place for five hours and just getting fed nose is not like something that is a enjoyable or like be something that you can even push through for that so long of a time so before i hop into the scenarios i want to know how is it that you are so consistent doing 30 plus hours of lead generation of cold calls inside of this industry yeah how are you so comfortable with that yeah i think the biggest thing is like jared i want to i don't want to act like it's just me I don't want to act like I'm this guy that's just this amazing 
perfect, dil- disciplined, you know, I'm doing this crazy feat. I have an amazing team around me. Um, shout out to Mike Ferry. Yeah. And uh, huge, huge shout out to my personal mentor, Milton James. So what a lot of people don't know is I actually, so for, for those who don't, and I don't even think I've, I've, speak, I've spoken to you about Milton. Um, Milton is, I would consider him my mentor. Um, he's not my formal coach or anything like that, mm-hmm. but Milton is a millionaire real estate agent in Orlando, Florida. Mm. Um, it's just him. He has a team of like him and like one or two buyers agents. He lists a hundred homes a year. Wow. In Prospecting. Orlando, in Prospecting. Florida, wow. Prospecting. So that's a hundred. Yeah. A hundred homes a year in Orlando. Yeah. And you know what that price point is. Yeah. Right, not not a hundred homes in Baltimore City, yeah. <laughs> hundred homes on Orlando. Yeah, and so a lot of people don't know this, but actually, I, I look at Milton kind of as like my workout partner. So I text him two times a day, a screenshot of me being on the dialer, and Milton, if I'm not on the dialer at the time that I'm supposed to be, I owe him a hundred dollars every time. So if I, if I miss it twice in one day, that's two hundred bucks. If I miss it for a whole week, that's whatever. Dude, that's the best job in the world for him. Yeah. Just to hold you accountable, and every time you mess up, he gets 100 yeah. bucks. What's well, the worst job for him? Because <laughs> you never miss? Because I never miss. Wow. I never miss. And I never miss because I want to be like him. That's why. That's all I needed to hear, and that's all they needed to hear. Yeah. Let's hop into the scenarios. Zavon, would you rather have someone tell you to – all right oh would you rather thinking about it have someone and i'm I'm happy to settle this debate i think i know your answer i'm just gonna ask the question i love it would you rather have someone to tell you to fuck off as soon as they pick up the phone or would you rather have someone hear you out and say no politely and why i would rather have someone hear me out why because listen I realized so you're pausing it. I, I realized that like throughout this podcast, like y'all probably think I'm cocky. No. Bro, shut up. Like like no, no no because like because I have so much confidence in myself and I'm not trying to sound cocky when I'm about to say what I'm no, about to say. No, I think it comes now. out it comes out naturally. Yeah, yeah, like Jared, I firmly believe that if you give me a chance, if you just give me a chance and you have a morsel of motivation, I firmly believe I can take that out. I can br- I can bring it out. I can bring it out, but I need a chance, Jared. Bro. I need I need you to not hang up the phone. I need you to have an open mind, and I need you to I, I just need you to hear me out. So I don't like I don't want see. So I don't count a con like if 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 you tell me to f off as soon as I pick up the phone and you hang the phone up, I don't count that as a contact. Hmm. Okay. I need to pitch you. I'm yeah, a pitch man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to be able to pitch you. I feel like if you stay on the phone with me long enough, you have no choice but to meet me. Can I tell you my philosophy? Just like my own, and keep in mind, viewers, I am not as much of a prospector as Zavon. Although door-to-door experience, this is really where this mentality comes out of is actually through door-to-door. So okay. it might not be the same as okay. prospecting. I understand. My philosophy is, is the quicker someone tells me no, the quicker I can find my yes. So like, I'd rather someone try to hurt my feelings and tell me to fuck off quick as soon as they pick up the phone. Cause if I'm looking for the four aces out of every 52 cards okay, and I flipped over a seven, I'm not trying to change that seven into an ace. Yeah. Me, as when I was an ISA for okay. real estate, like cold caller, my philosophy was, and I don't think there's a right or a wrong. I think there's two different styles, but my philosophy was just like, get to the next number. Like if someone's rude, mean, or an a-hole to me, I know I'm going to find two of those people a day. And thank you. You were just the one that I found very quickly and I'm on to the next conversation. Okay. That's all I was, I was just I, trying I, to have I a debate about saying. that. But, but you know look, but look, so, so look, 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 if you're an a-hole, that's one thing. Yeah. An a hole, I don't want to have anything to do with an a hole. Yes. But someone who's a firm no, which could come off as an a hole to some people. Yeah. A firm no. Look, excuse my French, but a, a hard, 
what, what's it say? A hard head makes for a soft ass. <laughs> Something like that. Like, anyone who's that firm of saying no, they have a reason that they're saying that. They're, they're, they have a reason that they're saying no that firmly because mm -hmm. they know that they'll say yes easily. Uh, okay. Why do you think someone who owns a $20 million business has to have five gatekeepers? Damn. Yo, I didn't think about so that. So when I would cold call car dealerships, I would cold call them. I would look for the GM. Or, but actually, let's use a better example. Let's say like a, like a, a chain of gas stations. Perfect example. Um, I look up the owner's look at the owner's name owner's name is bob mm -hmm. hey bob this is zavon calling you from premier executive media um i'm actually a social media marketer in the area we actually just now helped one of your competition increase their profitability by 10 percent last year i wanted to know if i could stop by tomorrow at five o'clock and show you exactly how we did that um definitely not interested but thank you though click seeing that guy for sure stopping by his place for sure no way. that's the guy i need to speak to really he has something to lose. Wow. I never viewed it that way, honestly. I had no choice but to view it that way. Yeah, no. Because, because I you probably only didn't had have a limited amount of businesses. Exactly. I come from the middle of okay, nowhere. Okay, okay. That's I, what I was getting I came from the at. middle of nowhere. Up here, Baltimore, there's a billion businesses yeah. opening up every year. I came from the middle of nowhere. So. Mm -hmm. You were milking it for all It's you either could. you're going to meet with me or you're going to freaking meet with me. Yeah, you're eventually going to meet with me at one point. I. <laughs> and if you're an expired, you're definitely going to meet with me. Like, my local car dealer. Uh-huh. I annoyed that, like, I called him, like, I just went, I just, I started just showing up at the, at the like, you're going to see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I don't want to be the dead horse. No, 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 no. Yeah. I love that one. Let me hit you with another scenario. I got one. Oh, really? Nah, you, you oh. see yours. All right. Because I really want to ask this one. Are we good on time, by the way? Uh, I mean, Let's just crush. it's up to him. Yeah. I don't really care. Because it's, cause it's 4 o'clock now. No, I'm good. It's 4 o'clock somewhere. Yeah. Ooh. If you could prospect from any location with unlimited money and resources, what would your environment look like for yourself or your team? So think about I am prospecting with unlimited money, unlimited resources. Like what does this environment, perfect prospecting environment look like for you? And then how would it look if you had to build a team of 10 people and they were all prospecting in one central location, not remotely? Did you ever think about that? Yeah. What would it look like? Yeah, I think about that all the time, actually. What would that look like? Probably probably the back of a van. No. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Perfect environment? Yeah. Why a van? So I could always be on the move. So that you could prospect and literally show up to these fuckers' houses? Yeah. Dude, that's nuts. Like, imagine if I set a listing appointment. Like, my biggest, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, imagine if I was in the back of a van. Like, I had a driver <laughs> driving me around. I set the appointment for 1 o'clock. <laughs> Dude. And then I just show up to their house in a suit, and I just step out of the van, and I'm just there. Bro, I'm, I'm imagining you, like, driving around Annapolis in a van, and you have a driver, and you're just circle prospecting the neighborhood. Like, yeah, I'm outside your neighborhood right now talking to some of the neighbors about their home value. I was wondering, like, when would be a better time for me and to stop by? And then I just show up. just show up. To, you pull into They say yes, driveway. and then it's like, okay, hold on. I, let, me, let me get out. Yeah. I could be there in five minutes. By the way, that's actually not my idea someone did that there's a very famous mike ferry agent who does that does granted, he record it granted it's not in a van okay but she has so she had i can't remember her she was on stage at a mike ferry superstar retreat she has a mercedes an s-class mercedes benz she sits in the back of it she has a driver and she prospects in the back of an s-class and her driver drives her around from appointment to appointment to appointment to appointment to appointment so it wouldn't be a van for you, bro. You want to be in the back of like no, a I want to be in the back of a van. I want to be able to stretch. I mean, you, you could get a nice van. You ever you seen know, those Mercedes? Yeah, those Mercedes Sprinter vans. Sprinter, vans. Sprinter vans? Yes. Okay, okay, Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying like some dirty. Or you could pull up. You could, <laughs> you could pull up in like a um a massive RV with like your face on the outside there you go. of it and shit. Whatever. Like I want to be safety van cells, and you just yeah. like you know when he's in town because yeah. he's rolling by, and your big mug is on there. Yeah, that. somewhere I can have a stand up desk inside of it. Yeah, like yeah, a yeah. Van, like that's why I say a van. I can have a stand up desk inside of it. You know, 
be back there prospecting and just be driving around all day long. I could have a listing appointment in Annapolis. I could have a listing appointment in Upper Marlboro. Wouldn't wow. matter. I'm just always on the move. That's perfect for me. Wow. Yeah. Do you want to handle your Were scenario? Were you expecting that, by the way? Were you expecting me? Like, I was expecting you to be like, man, you know, I just like, you know, like uh, all like all glass windows and like I'm looking over Los Angeles or yeah. something cool, not like a van. I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding, man. I think that's brilliant and it's yeah. very efficient, actually. I love Especially the in this area. I appreciate too. you saying that. Yeah, yeah. it's great for yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, did you have a scenario? Yeah, I'll do. Um, well, I'm not going to do the last one. I think you you, you like that one best. But uh, if you could help any celebrity or musician buy a rental, who would it be and why? An investment property, An not investment. like they're renting out a yeah. condo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> buy a Which rental. most of them are <laughs> at this point. Um, who would it be? Celebrity, musician. I yeah. mean, just anyone who – athlete, whatever falls in that category. Yeah. I would probably um, – I would probably try to help uh, someone like Charlie Munger. Who's that? One of the wealthiest people in the United States. Wow. Really? Yeah. Did you know that, Joe? No, but I could just tell from the sound of his, his name that yeah. he's a wealthy guy that not a lot of people know yeah. about. Probably someone like Charlie Munger, someone like Steve Ballmer. Okay, I know that. Someone like Peter Thiel. And I would just give them my whole commission. Just for them to like teach you? Yeah, I'd and be like, look, you. I'd be like, look, because if I have them in person, I got them. You know? Yeah. So I'd be like, look, here's the deal. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to help you with this. You're going to get my whole commission, but I need the next year of your life. Wow. Yeah. That's how confident you are, man. Like, that's, like, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. I mean, that as a, a compliment. Like, yeah. you're that confident that as long as you get connected to the right information and people, you're going to do exactly everything that you wanted to do. I mean, it's just not even confidence, Drew. I just feel like I have no choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know when I'm going to die. It could be tomorrow. Jeff does. He told me when you walked in. I'm kidding now. He's the Grim Reaper. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I just don't have a choice. Yeah. I got to, like, every, like, when you presented me with this opportunity to work with you, would think. Like, I don't have time to think about it. Don't, don't. don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. Yeah, but someone like that, though. That'd be cool. Someone like that, for sure. Who would you, who, who, I already know your answer. Who? Probably Gary. No. no? Gary, Gary who? Keller? Gary Vaynerchuk. Oh, I, I was going to, that'd be funny, me help, helping <laughs> Gary Keller with a rental property. Oh, I think this is a good uh, Dick. <laughs> ARV or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that honestly actually would, would probably the cool, be the coolest thing, because you would just, it would be, and document the whole thing, and he would just basically be like, you're the worst fucking, yeah. like, what, like you'd what you actually mean? go through the whole thing, and then he's like, all right. We're gonna take a step back, yeah, Jared. Yeah, here's everything you did wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? What do you mean you're buying a rental next to a skate park? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, yeah. Who um, would your wait? Uh, actually, yeah, I like that. Who who uh, who would yours be? If I could help any celebrity, it would be like a dude. I would I would help literally any hip hop artist do the same thing that Zayvon did, but just help them buy like investment properties in like up and coming neighborhoods in their like hometown. Mm. Like imagine going to like Lil Durk mm. and being like, yo, let's buy, let's literally buy a whole entire block in Chicago. Mm. You're going to rent it out to X, Y, Z, whoever you want, or you can give them free rent or yeah. you could start a charity and give out little Dirk, you know, anything like, I just think that would be so cool. Like yeah. you have a lot of money. Why not buy rental properties and where you grew up and like either give back to the community or make money off the community the, you can pick it. But I want a Rolex though, Jared. I want to get like yeah. a yacht master. Why, why should I invest in real estate? Oh, I why get, like, should I style Rolex? Why should I invest in? Yeah. This is little Dirk. This is <laughs> in talking to you. But this is, this isn't little Dirk. This is Zavon too. I want, see, bro, like Rolex. honestly, why man, I don't have a, like, as much as I hate to say it, like, yeah. besides, like, oh, well, real estate's the, you know, an asset and blah, 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 blah. And it's, like, I don't have, like, a cookie cut answer on, like, because maybe he shouldn't. Like, maybe, if he, <laughs> maybe, like, maybe he should buy the Ice bro, Out like, Rolex. <laughs> maybe if, like, the Ice Out Rolex is going to get him more YouTube views oh, than a well, rental property in Chicago oh, yeah, yeah, and he right cares about more about influence. <laughs> you're right about that, actually. In that aspect, yeah. than, like, helping out a oh, homeboy. It would, I would, I, if someone asked me that, I'd be like, dude, I don't, I, I actually don't know if buying an What's investment the real value? Yeah, like, why do you That's want, why do you want to have an investment property? Is it because of the rental income? Is it because of the influence? Is it because of what it does to your 
your family and friends. Like yeah. I, I would, I, I'd have to, really I'd have to LP mama, little Dirk. Mm. You know, I'd have to make qualify sure he's qualified. Him. Yeah, before yeah. anything crazy happened. Yeah, figure out his motivation. Definitely. Yeah. Um, one last scenario for you. Oh, okay. Same question. Uh, any celebrity, any person in the world, mm-hmm. but you're not selling them a rental property. Uh. You're bringing them on for a year contract to work under you as an agent on your team. You get to wow. train anyone in the world for a year. So originally you have it as entrepreneur. You changing it to celebrity? I, w- I wasn't changing it to celebrity. I was changing it to anyone in the world. Because if yeah. he has a different, like if there's like this random hustler that I don't know about, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. like an entrepreneur. And he's yeah. like, I want this saxophone player to be my agent. Yeah, Charlie like, Munger fucked you up. You're <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Now, yeah. exactly. now I got to switch does, it up. Does it have to be, so, so it has to be someone that works for me? Like I can't work for them? No, you can't work for them. <sighs> you, you are responsible for training this person how to be a residential realtor in Baltimore. Damn. And they're moving to like Fed, like they're they're coming here. Yeah, could be anyone. Yeah, this is gonna sound like who's the most who has the most raw talent. Yeah, or like distribution and influence that would be a realtor. You know that you could see like. Yeah. They don't have to do their transaction coordination. Yeah. They just have to get it signed and bring it to the closing table. Um, yeah, it would have to be Elon Musk, honestly. Yo. Um, yeah. I yeah, wasn't thinking of him. Be, well, the reason why is, Dude, he'd be I mean, awkward as shit, though. What are you talking about? But the thing is, and this is why I prospect so much, it's not going to matter. <laughs> Yo. Because once the rubber hits the road with him, like... He's going to just outwork everyone? Like, he's going to outwork me. Wow. So and I think that who, I work hard. And then I'm going to yeah. see him working so hard, I'm going to work harder. I'm trying to out. I don't care. Like else. when, I, like when you ask me that question, I care about like habits. Yeah. No. Definitely. You know what I'm definitely, saying? Definitely. Definitely. Like I was thinking as soon as you said that, I was thinking high performance athlete, high performance entrepreneur. Okay. You know what I mean? So you look for that in like people that you are gonna work with. Is this person must have good habits? They're. I don't know if I told you this, but I've conducted already like multiple interviews for people that contact me that want to be on the team mm-hmm. actually yeah um and that's actually the number one thing that i look for is the is habits and the their habits how productive are they are they willing to die for this how do you find out if someone's willing to die for something though in an interview i have an answer we'll teach you it later <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding Jared, you just feel it. You just feel it. Yeah. Do you like, feel like you read people well? I yeah. think you do. I think yeah. like you're really emotionally intelligent. I appreciate you saying that. I just think that you you know when someone is willing to die for what they what they care about. You know. Yeah. Like you know when someone's willing to stop everything to make whatever it is successful. Like I can honestly say I'll, I'll die for my success. Like that's how I commit. I have I have no choice but to accomplish. You know what I, I accomplish? You know what quote I love is like people who say like I want to die on my own sword. Yeah, something very noble mm-hmm. about that, right? Like sticking with your yeah. weapon, like fucking dying with your own like ability and your own talent. Like yeah. it's because that's it was a decision the you best made. Quote right there, dying on your own sword. How far are you really willing to go? And that's why I love people like Kobe. And that's why I love people like Elon Musk. You know, when he sold PayPal. That's, like, one of my favorite stories, bro. The fact that you even know that he sold PayPal. Because, like, I mean, I guess it's everyone knows it now. But, like, when I first heard about that, I was like, he made PayPal? Do you understand? (laughs) Dude, in human existence, do you know how many people would do what he did? Like, would go on the journey that Elon has gone on? No. Jared. Or like investing the money back into Tesla. To have hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. And take that and say, I have this dream. I have this aspiration. I'm going to blow hundreds of millions. Everything I made yeah. off of this company sale. Money that could protect my family to infinity. Yeah. I could sit on a beach forever just off the interest off of this and take all of that 
and diminish it and bet it on yourself. Do you understand yeah. how few people would do that? Like actually put in the situation, right? If they were actually, Jared, if they were actually in the situation, you got 800 million in the bank account in your bank account. Yeah. Would you spend that on a rocket company? Wow. Would you spend that on a car company? At the time, Fisker was out there. Yeah. Fisker failed dramatically. For electric cars, right? For electric cars. Fisker dra failed dramatically. Would you spend every all of that on, on two on industry. two ideas? <laughs> yeah. And to get that close to failure like Elon did. Yeah. Do you understand like what that like that's beyond like that's 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 in here. Yeah. It's either that's that you or can't he's teach like a, that, Jared. Like you can't yeah. that's not something you learn in school. That's not something you that's 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 that's, that's in there. Yeah. You either have that or you don't. And I can tell whether you've got that or you don't. That's what I say. That's what I mean by saying, will you die for this? That's what I mean. That's what I mean, Jared. Dude, that's fucking epic. I'm like still so mind blown about the Elon thing, but we got to hop into uh, truth or trends. Truth or trends. <laughs> Yo, can, da, we da, da, cut da. That? can we cut that and make it like a song? Go ahead. What Zavon just did? Yeah, you can you can cut it. I'll be top five on Spotify in no time. Um, so this is the part of the show where we ask you if if this is a truth or a trend. It's just going to be a one phrase. Yeah. Thing you just say. Yeah. Oh, this is a truth or nah, that's trendy. Like not going to be around. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Jeff, do you want to do every other one? Just go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, cold calling. Truth. Truth. Why? Because Jared. Okay. <laughs> I knew this one was gonna get me going. <laughs> Jared, there's a lot of ages. <laughs> Let me just before you say anything. There's a lot of people either probably watching or that we have in in offices that we work in that believe that cold calling is a straight up trend. It's who, going who, away. Who would think it's a trend? Because I was confused by this one. That's why I didn't want to take it. Bro, people think that you're not going to be able to call anyone anymore. Oh, no, I, I see that all the time, actually. No, I see that all the time. People say, cold calling's dead. Yeah. Like, when I got my real estate license. Really? Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> like, it comes up spam risk and this, that, and this. No, no, no. Like, so, all this stuff. And, like, even that, there's. Go on, go on, go on. Jared. So, okay. When I got my real estate license in the area that I'm from in Virginia, no one, no one cold calls. Like, they were trying their heart. They were like, Zay, you're wasting your time. Yeah. Don't do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't do it. Wow. Right? Everyone thinks it's dead. Right? But the reality is, okay, it's, it's a conversation, right? You have to conversate with people. And I would argue whether you cold call. So, you know, agents will spend $20,000, $30,000 a month on Zillow. <laughs> That's right? crazy, actually. Agents will spend, I'm giving examples. No, they'll I spend $20,000 yeah, a month yeah, on yeah. Zillow. They'll spend $20,000 a month on insert advertisement here. Mm -hmm. They do all of that with the hopes of having a lead. And then what do they have to do with that lead, Jared? They have to call it, don't they? They or have to call it. it. Yeah. They have to call it. So, like so you did all yeah. of that to avoid making calls just to call somebody. Why not just call them? Mm -hmm. like do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, you're like, does that make sense? It does, because you're just doing what other people don't want to do. And like, in fact, they don't want to do it so much that they're willing to pay for someone else to do it. And you're just like, but I'll you're just still, do that. but they're still doing but they're it. They're still doing because it. you're calling someone that doesn't know you. Yeah. Or at a bare minimum, doesn't know you enough to where they called you to, yeah. to begin with. Unless there's some ISA company that is somehow calling your sphere of influence and connecting you to your friends, which would be a brilliant idea if anyone's watching, create that. There's no reality where you're not cold calling a lead. There's none, unless you have an ISA team that's setting up appointments for you. Yeah. And you're just driving to appointments that you are or with people that you even already know too. That's right. the craziest thing. Which is like what? 
So it's a truth. It's human interactions, Jared. Yeah. It's going to be true until the end of time. I have to conversate with people I don't know Mm -hmm. to get stuff I don't have. That's the truth. That's the truth. Brad, that's deep. Yeah, I got, um, I'm going to, based off the conversation, um, in, in today, right now, what are we in? June, July, 2022. Facebook ads. Truth or trend? I'd say it's a truth. Because at the end of the day, I I think that everything's a truth. Everything works. (laughs) Yeah. Nothing doesn't work. Right? If you give me enough Facebook leads, I'm sure I'll find someone that wants to do something. The truth is speaking to people. And any means that you need to do to do that, you'll be successful to some degree. Yeah. You can call it Facebook leads. You can call it YouTube leads. You can call it Zillow leads. You can call it whatever leads. Whatever med- whatever median you have to put in place, medium to make yourself you put feel in place, comfortable. choose whatever you want. But it's going to come down at some point to speaking to people. Yeah. And probably people that you don't know. And probably people that you don't know. So my thing is, if it's going to come down to people, to speaking to people that you don't know, Jared, why not just get that result at the most cost of effective means, which is going to be cold calling? Yeah. Unless, unless you're at a point to where you can scale out, you have a huge marketing budget and maybe it is worth it. Maybe it's worth your while at that. If you're Walmart Mm -hmm. and you can afford to spend billions of dollars on advertisements then maybe it is worth it at that point to start leveraging out a little bit, right? Having people call leads for you, but it's still going, like no matter what level, whatever, what medium you wanna do, it's gonna come down to a conversation at some point. Yeah, it's funny that you just look at it all black and white like that. I like that mentality. It takes a lot of the fear out of the game. Right. You know, it's just you're making a conversation. Newman talks about it all the time. You could stand outside of a Home Depot and talk to 25 people a day. I guarantee you find one or two people that are going to buy or sell a house. Right. And that's for our industry, right? I mean, if we have a store, I use the word, I use the example of Walmart, obviously. If you Mm -hmm. have a store, right, then you're going to get attention from just having a brick and mortar location. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But if that's not the case, Right. If you're in a service based industry. Yeah. Then you got to do what you got. You, you see what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. You can't put a flag out in front of like your fucking chest when you're walking down the yeah. street and being like sale. Like I have a sale. Yeah. Six, you know, six to yeah. two percent commission. Yeah. <laughs> but even I, I will say this, though, even brick and mortar store like L.A. Fitness prospects. Yeah, they should be. No, they do. They have their, like, uh, little... They have an outbound sales team. (laughs) Marriott Hotels, Prospects. They have call centers. And those are brick-and-mortar locations. Yeah. Truth. Thank you. Virtual reality. In what aspect? Like, do you think that we are going to... Not And I don't, I really don't want to spend too much time on this because there's two other ones that I'm honestly more passionate about asking you. But do you think that... (laughs) So just fucking ask those. No, 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 no. no. I could not. You just want me to give a quick answer. Dude, we just talked about like time and how important it is. And it's like, these two other ones are so much more important than this one. (laughs) No, no, no. I'm just saying because I don't want want to make this a metaverse episode where we're talking about virtual reality (laughs) for 10,000 hours. I know we can go down this rabbit hole together. I don't want to. I don't don't want to either. uh, It's 4 o'clock on a freaking Wednesday. I can't talk about the metaverse right now. Okay. I'm kidding. I can. Okay. But I know it'll take a We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. So virtual reality from the standpoint of this, do you think that like if there's 10 people in America, eight, out of those 10 are going to have a headset in their home. Like it's going to be mainstream in every home. There will be a virtual reality headset that you can put on and enter another world that you feel just as, if not more connected with than this reality. 
from that standpoint alone. I'm not talking about anything else about the capabilities of VR, but just from a mainstream, will this be in eight out of 10 of Americans' homes? Let's leave it at that. In the next five, 10, 15 years, whatever the time frame. Like, will it ever get to a point where it's like, oh, just turn on the VR or turn on the Oculus? And like, that is a household name like a Keurig. You Truth know, or trend? I think that people were probably saying the same thing in like the 1600s. Do you think that we'll ever be able to have plays being able to be casted upon a screen mm. in our own house? And will that be mainstream everywhere? Yeah. So you think it's just going to follow the same line? I think it could. We'll, we'll find could. out. I think we I think we've got someone <laughs> we've got Mark Zuckerberg that's diligently working on yeah. making that reality. Yeah. And I think that Mark has a lot more pull than I think that most people realize. Really? Yeah. I would actually classify him as one of the most powerful people in the world. I mean, dude, he produced the social network, one of the best <laughs> movies in the world. I'm kidding. Yeah. He also created Facebook. But I love that movie. I thought you were gonna say he I'm just kidding. He also created Farmville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Candy Crush. I I think that I think I, I'll say I'll say truth because if you really just look historically, there's a lot of stuff that we thought wouldn't be possible that is in a very c- prominent part of our day to day lives now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be forward thinking. Cool. I'm gonna say truth. How about that? Truth or trend? Drake's new album. Dude, I think that. To be able to appreciate Drake's new album, you can't be someone. Oh, I don't like don't say that. what Charlamagne <laughs> said, dude. Just say anything oh. but what Charlamagne <laughs> oh, said on an Instagram reel. I think that to appreciate Drake's new album, um, I think you have to be able to be someone that listens to more than just songs that would be top 10 on the radio. Oh, I think you have to be able to be able to appreciate music in other elements than what is popular. Wow. I think the best description of that album is it's the type of album that you would listen to while on vacation in Europe. Hmm. I can't exactly put into words how that makes sense, but it's like, I think that that album is definitely a out of the box album yeah. that if you're someone that just wants to listen to like heavy 808s yeah. and like raps, like mainstream rap, you're probably not going to appreciate it. But that's okay because I feel like Drake realizes that there's a lot more artists that are producing that and there's a lot of songs that he has that fit that mold. And he even put a song on the album that fit that mold that fits that mold, which Jimmy is Jimmy Cooks. C- Jimmy Cooks. So I think that he touched on that. And I feel like he knew that that was probably gonna be the song that has the most plays on yeah. his album. But I really feel like at this point, Drake is solidifying his role in the rap industry as probably the most versatile rapper ever yeah because he really he, he has music for everything dude to that line and i hate to make this about the drake show real yeah. quick but i just have to say this yeah i was getting coffee this morning okay and i was listening where to where well hold on, hold on right over there in the office dude. in the uh, Cur- no at, at the keurig lounge at the keurig lounge at kw flag <laughs> okay sponsored by keurig um i was getting coffee and i was listening we need to work on like having you go to dunkin donuts bro don't get me started on Duncan. I love yeah. Duncan. All right. Don't get me started on Duncan. It's the yeah, worst coffee yeah, there's hates, ever been. He hates ever Duncan. been. Let me just say this Meek Mill thing. Go ahead. I was Meek. listening to the Meek Mill uh, Championships album. Have you ever listened to that? Yeah. It's I like the to green it from one. Start to finish. Oh really? Yeah. The one where it's just his eyes and it's like the yeah, confetti. all the glitter and shit. When yeah. the Eagles won the 2017 Super Bowl, or it might <laughs> that's be. A, that's <laughs> the only reason he brought this up. No, no, no. Um, but anyway. Um, he has a song with Drake in that back to back, like right when they came and like 
became boys again. Mm. And in the song, Drake says, I have more slaps than the Beatles. And I was like, you know what? I really want to fact check him on that because I think he might be right. And let me say this before and any multiple person. multiple genres. Yes. And multiple genres. Before any person says, you don't know the fucking Beatles, man. <laughs> you don't know about John Lennon. You don't know about yeah. this guy. Yeah. Uh, Rango and his <laughs> yeah. song Photograph that made me cry as a 13 year old child like from a mainstream like if you took just two people in America and said pick more Drake songs that you like and pick more Beatles songs yeah. that you like or that you know of like Drake has tons of Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds that's a hot take. What but people like, don't realize is, man, like Drake. Because time hasn't happened yet. Drake has the most versatile ensemble of good music that I think is available for this era. Yeah. He's done collaborations with some of the biggest. If you really look, he's done collaborations with some of the biggest artists from all over the world who don't even necessarily produce the same type of yeah, music yeah, yeah. Him. like Wizkid and all those guys right and like, um who's the who's the latino rapper J a latino, uh, him and there's Tukachi one six one. nine dude <laughs> jeff just got us canceled <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding but yeah I, I know who you're talking about yeah, there's like he makes music with all types like it's really well versed I, I like it. You know what? I yeah. kind of just say this yeah. on the topic, Drake. I really love that he reaches down and like collabs with like Smiley or like Blockboy JB when he like was a nobody or maybe not well, a nobody. It's a but problem though. Why? Because these people have Drake careers. Yeah. Because realistically, like has who's, anyone? Yeah, who has? I was just going to say. So let's 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 take let's let's think about that for a second. Um. Let's look at Money in the Grave. Do you remember Rick that Ross? Song? Yeah. That song, one of the biggest, like a lot of people, you you probably noticed, you're a hip-hop head. Like, the biggest part of that song was the shout-out to the producer that made that beat for Money in the Grave. What's he say in the beginning? He shouts out the producer. Who is the producer? can't remember that's the problem that's yeah. my point like she was actually so it was a woman i remember oh. she was hot for like a brief period like she was hot for a brief period of time and then she faded away wow even smiley. with producers smiley yeah he's doing well i like i actually like his new song i actually like what new song i only know that album that came out and i liked some songs on the album the one with the drake song on it but i don't know the new song he released a new album it's called the the song that i like the the best song on the album's called grammy grammy yeah it's actually not that bad that's cool he's yeah. from toronto or something yeah or? cool so you got smiley you've got i love mcconan bro he's kind of like a low-key icon i feel like block boy jb yeah who else that did like drake remixes like uh, yeah i'd hate to throw him in here and we gotta end yeah, the yeah. podcast after this not after this but little baby and gunna mm. when drake hopped on um drip harder like for me personally like i knew who gunna was a little bit from ysl yeah i really didn't know that much about little baby yeah but like when Drake hopped on that album, bro, and I yeah. heard that first song, Never yeah. Recover, I was like, dude, Never I got to listen to this mm. whole entire album. Never that recover. was the one. Dude, that Never song. Recover. Yeah. That one. That one was actually all right. And then when I went through the whole album and I was like, dude, I like these guys borderline just as much as Drake. And then they Never became recover like my favorite, good. you know. Never Recover was good. That's, yeah. So he smashed that song and they both baby and Over gonna, the top with Smiley. Yeah. Dude, Drake's verse on that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whew. Dude, Nike does not pay him to show us like how to do it again or however he says it. 
He says it better than me. Like, but they don't pay what, me to do it. They show. They pay me to show you I'll do it again. Yeah, dude. What? What? I love that. Um, <laughs> now that we're just getting in this Drake zone, yeah, real quick, oh my one of my favorite Drake lines is when it's in I think Chicago freestyle, mm. and he's like, Ooh. "What? What? What line is it? Do you think you can guess it?" Um, it's like, dude, that whole song is a line, so, bro. So when he I goes, mean, whole, yeah, he goes, um. Like, who cares about making a hit? Like, go do that shit again. And it's just like that mentality of like, you know what I mean? You could have the biggest success in the world. You could have a million Instagram followers. You could finally get that car you always wanted. But who cares? Yeah. Like, go out and do If you don't have the power to do it again or show someone how. Like, and that's what I mean. Like, I think Drake is like trying to solidify himself, not just as the best rapper of all time, but the best artist of all time mm. because really hit for hit i think it's hard to say that there's not another artist that has been as spread out as yeah. him consistently and this album definitely spoke to that i like this album no i, I think it. that he was making this album for a new genre of people yeah this was not drake this was aubrey i like that i'm kidding now uh, I'll I told be honest, that to Shaq. Though. I haven't listened to it yet, oh, so I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna give it a first oh, year. Lo- You'll listen love to it more tonight. than anyone. Oh. Um, I can clear up some of this uh, Beatles Drake yeah argument scenario. All right, so after doing a little bit of research, if I just read the headlines, it would it would have made it look like Drake has the most of all time. Drake has the most Hot 100 charts entries ever. Entries, really? entries, Whoa. but it's not. It's like. It's it's very misleading because it says like 237 total entries. That's not how many songs he's had. So the real thing between the Beatles and them, it says right here, Drake adds yet another record to his repertoire as he ties the Beatles for the most top five hits in the Hot 100s history, which was 29. 29 of the, the Hot, you know, hits. Hmm. The Beatles, uh, during their eight years as a band, had... 20 number one hits and 34 top 10 hits on the billboards and then um where was it it's a drake had 11 number one hits so just huh. to clarify for the listeners out there who are like freaking yeah. out because of the beatles the other thing is too quite honestly we're not giving the beatles a fair shot to like find deep cuts uh, like who in the '60s or like the '70s mm-hmm. was like listening to the Beatles' deep cuts? I mean, a lot. The there's way a lot. that Zayvon, there's a lot. Though, but yeah. no, I know there is. But I'm saying in the '60s, who was listening to the Beatles' deep yeah. cuts? Like Zayvon and I are listening to like random Drake yeah. songs that we like yeah. love so much, and that, like, also aren't ease that popular. of access. Exactly. To yeah, and and you have to think like it's a completely different world. I mean, they only had eight years of actual like, yeah producing and then yeah. each of them did their own solo things whereas like w- the individual drake has done much more as a solo person than any of them combined yeah i would even say in terms of, in terms of the length of time they had to i mean how many years has he been around? i, I just, 20, I just right? feel like some older person is just listening to this right now with their fists clenched yeah. like these that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah. yeah they're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they don't, don't know. know yeah but i think i think i mean just look at you look at of stats alone. I mean, yeah. yeah, obviously the Beatles are probably up there, most influential in terms of number of people, but yeah. They've only had eight they only had eight years to That's do it. That's crazy actually. Which is pretty wild. Man, if you look at Drake's past eight years in, <laughs> in the game, they far exceed anything that the Beatles said that the Beatles done, man. I don't care. I'm just gonna say that. I don't care, man. You give me Drake's past eight years, I'll listen to that that music for the rest of my life over listening to the Beatles for the rest of my life. Ten times. Oh, that's a good. Yeah, scenario. that is a good scenario. Would you rather listen to the Beatles know, the rest bro. of your life or Drake the rest of your life? Obviously, this room is probably at least you two. It's a hard toss up for me. Uh, anyone would say Drake. I don't know about anyone because they've. Got I don't think every, I don't think I'm leaning got towards saying Beatles Drake. Type, he's got Beatles type music. He's got hype type music. Name oh, me well, yeah, yeah, Yellow know. Submarine <laughs> <laughs> equals Drake. I want to hear that comparison. <laughs> maybe there actually maybe is. the tussy slide is the most like that but that's about it because it's like a dance i could like pull up drake songs because i don't know drake songs by their name i just have them saved in my spotify but i promise you there is 
a Drake song. And I, I What's just the Drake like song? Or what I just do you mean? feel like I'm the biggest Drake lover of all time. I'm not. I just think that he's just that good. You know Isn't what I mean? it cool how we introduced you as the certified listing boy and you had no <laughs> idea why? Say it again. We introduced you as the certified listing you boy. Did? And then now here we are talking about. Isn't that crazy how, Poppy. by the way, the that was that was an amazing album. Yeah. Sort of how Lover Boy, that was mm-hmm. amazing. That was awesome. What was the Drake song real quick that you were uh, thinking of? I want to see if I can I can't know. remember the name of it. But like, how does it go or what does he say? And I want to see if I can tell it. I think it, it I is. think it was, so it was on his album that he did in 2012. Um, I think it was called. Thank Me Later? No, it wasn't Thank Me Later. I think the song was called Will It Last? And, it's, and the lyrics, the, the lyrics go, have you ever been in first, but you hope that you're last? I just hope that this lasts. Oh, wow. It was wow. A very romantic. It was very deep. It was a very deep song, actually. Was that from like a mixtape? No, this was from an album. Bro, no, it's not. Will It Last is not a Drake song. Pull up the song because I'm, I'm curious. Gonna, I don't even yeah, know what. Yeah, yeah, this is. It's actually. Oh, really, is this on? Uh, Nothing was the same. Hold on. To to be on the Beatles side of history. Uh, be on the Beatles side of history. The Drake's been at it for 22 years. That's 23 awful. years. Yeah. Imagine if the Beatles had done it an extra man, 10 years. Nobody wants to hear the Beatles, man. An yeah. extra 10 years. I think. I think they'd either tank and it'd be the worst thing of all time or, uh, yeah. you know, Jesus Christ would be second <laughs> place. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if, yeah. All right, dude, everyone listening is loving this. Yeah. Let's just do some ASMR. One, one day I'm going to have to figure out, yeah, I got to figure out what that song is. Lust for Life. So, bro, that is on that's the Sooner. The it's on Sooner Than Later album. It's the black one. It's his first. It, that's technically a mixtape. It's so far gone. So far gone. Whatever. That's a mixtape? It says album, It's though. the black one, right? Yeah, that, it's that Yeah, one. it got released, I think, last year as, like, an oh, album, really? but it was, like, his first mixtape and shit with, I think, Lust Boy for Wonder Life or whatever. It is an amazing song. Compared that has, like, a rock or element to it, doesn't it? Yeah. Or like when something? I type in "lust for life," the first thing that comes up is Iggy Pop. Huh. So it it must be. A, it doesn't have a rock element to it. It's 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 actually like a guitar. It's though. actually it's a probably a spin off of this a, song. An extremely deep song. Mm. Like it, like it it's not even has. like very melodic. Hmm. Oh, this is like one of the most popular songs in the world. What is this? Lust for life, Iggy Pop. But then. Obviously, Drake's Lost for Life is there much different than that. That's, that's be much oh, yeah. Yeah. I got plans. See, bro, this I is one of those songs that, like, if I'm not listening to it at night in the car driving home thinking about my life, it's hard to me to get in the zone to even listen to a song like this. But the thing is, he can make a song like this, and then he can make a song like Way Too Sexy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'll take the Beatles. Wow. Okay. Is that how we're ending it? No, nah, I, I still can't decide. I like I like Drake a lot. Okay. Drake's one of my. On I I love Drake, but I also like oh the Beatles. God. Well, thank you guys for watching. Oh my god. <laughs> no, you have Don't a good you worst. have a good uh a good closing. Uh, why don't you hit him with yeah, the... Yeah, true, true that, true that, true that, true that. Gosh. Drake so it, talk. Yeah, so... Over. We we talked about a lot today. Yeah. Um. I I think Jeff had an opportunity to hear some things that maybe he never heard you say before. I definitely had mm. some, you know, realizations yeah. of things that you've said that hit me, yeah. and I was like, wow, that's... So I'm really excited to actually personally listen to this. I thought a lot of what you were talking about was sick. Yeah. Um, but from this point forward, like, why is it that you are even so still, like, on this journey of trying to go yeah. and take over the world? Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. You know, again, going back to the whole cocky thing, like, uh, that's not my intention behind this answer. But it's like, you know, I know what I want in life. 
Like I know, like it's it's not even about what I want in life. I know what I deserve. Mm. Like I know from my skill set for Zayvon Johnson. Like I just know what I deserve, and yeah. I know that it's twenty times higher than anything I've ever even came close to touching at this point. And I feel like, especially when you've got people rooting for you and you've got people that expect you to do certain things, you kind of have no choice but to follow through on those plans. Yeah. It's like an obsession. Like, Is it safe to say it's your mission? I mean, it's like what something you have to accomplish, it's or is like, it something like, you never accomplish? Like, but see, like, but a mission can be failed, though. Like, it's an obsession. It's an obsession, and it's something that I'll like die trying to accomplish. Like, if I made a million dollars a year working in some cubicle. I will be the, ha the most unhappy person on the planet. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I'd be the happiest. <laughs> I was like, dude, what? Where'd that come from? No. Like, it's an obsession, dude. And it's just like, I just feel like, I just feel like you got to have that in you. Yeah. Like, Kobe Bryant had it in him. Elon Musk has it in him. Michael Jordan has it in him. Like it's deeper, it's deeper than real estate. It's deeper than me and you sitting here making this podcast. It's, it's like <clears throat> statues of me. Yeah. A legacy, an everlasting legacy, Napoleon, Alexander the Great. And why not strive like, or why not make that the, the, the mission? You know, like if you if, if you're in a world where you can think limitlessly, why why would you not have that thought? Like, because even if that didn't happen, the journey of that journey is that's like the only journey that matters. I'm gonna be fifty in twenty five years, right? I can make it to age fifty, a multimillionaire. Or I can make it to age 50 doing nothing with my life. But either way, in 25 years, I'm going to be 50. I'd rather get there with all these accomplishments. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? No, that makes a lot so of I sense. So I can't leave any cards on the table. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I'm fired up for you, bro. I'm excited. I'm rooting for you. Yeah. Big I've time. torn, like, friendships up over this. Not us, right? No. As you as you should. Yeah. Right? Like, friendships, relations. Like, this stuff is hard. Like, relationships I've destroyed. Friendships I've destroyed. Like... I know that there might be someone listening to this or there might be someone who might see this and they think that this is crazy. It is crazy. It's nuts. <laughs> like it is. But it's, if you, if you want certain things in life, you gotta just, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta give everything up. Yeah. <sighs> the ultimate sacrifice, man. What a way to end the show. Thanks so much for being here, man. Thank you for having this me. This is definitely not the last. That's for sure. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Dude, yeah. And uh special thank you to you, which a lot of people watching this will know uh, yeah. and see. The reason why we have timestamps on our videos because you oh, recommended it in the comments. Dude. As soon as you said that, I was like, yeah. shit, why so, am I not doing that? It's an amazing idea. What's my uh, like royalty? from that welcome to the show congratulations you got this is this you'll is repayment be, you'll Thank be you. on the honorable mention wall <laughs> the honorable okay. mention the, ho it's the hall of fame right if you there. will yeah on a post actually i think this is like what episode you're in the the low i, don't, I think we're past double digit we're at over 10 at this point but 
Okay. You're, you're hitting all kinds of achievements being that's your royalty for yeah. sure. There's going to be a lot of content with all of us. So don't worry about it. Yeah. But okay. Jeff should have, he should have documented the prospecting panel today. I had to throw that in there. Why do you say that? I don't know. Cause you probably crushed it. I did great. Yeah. I think I told people stuff they didn't want to hear though. Good. See, that's why I wish we had that. And you know what? I didn't know about it. And yep. honestly, on the only way person. I will know about it is if I subscribe. No, and speaking of subscribing, you should probably subscribe <laughs> to the YouTube channel. <laughs> like, we'll see you guys next uh, next time. Love you. Thanks, man.